All right, do you want to say anything about? No. All right, just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a deep breath first. I am. We have left our broken house in ecstasy, traveling out of the city. We walk in a vaporous valley with our bovine heads bent toward the plain where it is said it is possible to measure desire. We can't wait to see the grass that grows there. Our wish makes us thirsty, spilled from an empty, from an empty pan, pan, the patch of rice left, left behind, behind, running to, to risk the rain. the rain. Time and again, the curly yellow weeds were clawed with clicks by bicyclists who dodged us where we walked, thriving with modesty. Tree and grass seeds scattered in the increasingly firm air. There is no analogous flattened happiness to that of curious and receptive travelers. Indeed, the morning bowed informally to us from the wide road, which was filled with things to be coupled and compared. Many, Many thoughts, thoughts remain, remain in, a soft in a soft head. head. How was it that we could still hear the slurping of deep kisses as clearly as when they first occurred and were recognized as the structure for much that was to come? We remembered our thrill upon discovering, for example, that two halves could be reversed. We find it delightful to go to another place while we still sleep in this one. One this, this in, in sleep, sleep is, is still. still. Where will we fit nips? We wrote these lines with inconsolable dispatch after leaving the apartment in which we had spent our first night. Welcome was the official instruction hanging from its door. A stranger had knocked with a deep and sylvan racket just above the peephole at its center, and we, sleepy from our exertions but hospitable in the hope that hospitality would be offered in return, had taken the shiny knob in our fingers and opened the door. We could say no more than this. In a perfect circle rises the warm spring night, but it gains an enormous length before it sinks. Spreading our legs, we invited the stranger to enter and make himself comfortable. Only my shadow will come to you tonight to beg for a little flesh. A very good song is on the radio and heralds our departure, the signature of a favorite artist is the prick of the gathering flood. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> rouge plants and shutters. We walk toward the bend in the road, carrying but half of what we need. Driven, sense in sense, relentlessly, close hereabouts, and bestowed. On our body, desire has formed a, a wordless groove. <laughs> Thus, the body partakes of purposive extens existence. Life itself is productive, and its elements, which are both the seed beds and the seed, are nourished and maintained by special essences in the atmosphere. But we could not take seriously the supposed likeness of grass upon the earth with the hairs on a man's head. Along the Along road, the road socks. Grass, no, no braiding of their, their steel. steel. Love opens life's warm seams. Do you realize that we're clothed in skin inadequate to any other destiny? No one was there to hear this question. The mother's breast is still unveiled, but no one watches the scene with fatherly interest. The morning light, forming curly drops of mist sprayed against our mouth. We inhaled the heady emanations of the eucalyptus trees, whose ragged bark and pungent buttons were drawn into the breeze. A young, 
and Halford Mayer approached the trough under the trees nervously, shying with contradictory impulses, prancing backward and tossing her head. Then she thrust her head forward and curled her lips around a column of water deep in the trough beside the fence. We opened our shoulder bag and wrote in our book. Hidden under our open eyes, the cleft is coterminous with our destination. We set aside our rifted introspections in order to get to the motel by nightfall. The shoulder of the interstate is not safe after dark. So without pausing for thought, we found ourselves by 8 p.m. facing a salad bar under an enormous antlered clock at Al's Lockhorn Cafe. <laughs> Across the street, the reflection of the word eat from Al's neon sign was flashing on the windows of the recluse motel. Ah, uh, night lights pushing through to the bed, almost at that height already. We know that sex is sometimes an escape from other, more indigestible knowledge. <laughs> the lights flash again, and we have no appetite but one. Again, like anyone, we're miserable from the news of the day. Flapping around the air-conditioned room, newspaper brushes our skin. We kick the sheets off. Legs open the street. The curtains are drawn a little. And as long as we can see the source of the rumblings, we can remain relaxed. Herds of jellyfish surround waterfall. Sex is an incitement urging us to lapse, or rap, or glare. Uninspected, undressed, and unreconciled as we are, we continue to watch for the flickering which had been an anchor man. It is the passage of time that allows us to become moral. And as we wait, we watch the wriggling of the sunlight across the floor and onto the futon, where we are resting as it expands until we succumb to its elusive but warm pressure on our naked breasts, which we call me and not me. Not me. <laughs> Just as the tips of bare magnolia twigs make little ovals in the wind, just as the eyes of a frog can see in every direction, just as common gossip wavers this way or that. Just as mothers in their sleep hear their babies crying from all sides and come awake in an instant. Just as a horse may be taken to represent certain forms of meditation. And just as desire provides its own genesis and sex its own explication. Just, just so. so. We sprawl in the flickering sunlight. The sunlight is applicable to our situation. Or should we say we make it so? All labor is respectable in the saving. Masturbation is equivalent to a pamphlet. Militants <laughs> flirts in their fortress. The author with foamy criteria. Forever! We thought this when the music ended and the news came on. We saw an island and riders back on the mainland. The president was sitting in a wicker chair drinking antitoxins. We unfolded our map, the one that indicates both depth and elevation, and dumped our money into it. There was enough for at least one more day, which meant we could leave before the bank opened. The news was in its final stage as we settled into the rented car. The jock and the meteorologist were interviewing a mercenary. The meanings of the words climate, climax, and calamity had merged, and we departed. The noise of a car and the sense of motion are always conducive to introspection. We knew we were angry about something. <laughs> Many things point to it. As for anger itself, it is located sometimes in the torso, resembling a dahlia root, rooted in the stomach but blooming against the ribs where they form a cage behind the breasts. And sometimes it's in the skull, like a copious sweat worked up by an idea or so it seems upon introspection. 
Well, it has to introspect something. Assuming abrupt control, assuming magnification, the authentic Aphrodite is relatively large and ambiguous. You titles of men do not touch us. Not the samurai, but the scowl produces our choice vocation, our literate licks. However, we confess for the sake of our love of the camel and its open sway that sometimes, while havoc has hold of our priceless repose, we call upon Joyce's multiple styles for proof that we can say modestly, once sprawled in the flickering sunlight. We do. For the love of arachnida and sticky arms. Or is it that we had just written within the grip of amidst the clamoring semi-tropical shrubs, cl clasping ourself to ourself in the dampness. Obscure Makut, participation in Haitian election. Dampness, thicker than rain, fades within our pungent, dilettantish mouth, tasting of affinity and finality. The end and the beginning of money meet, obscure Haitian. Not fitting, or water, funny bursting, under earth. Earth fitting, water, not under, or funny bursting. Or under earth, fitting, bursting, not funny water. Earth, water, under funny, or not fitting, bursting, not water, earth. Or bursting, under fitting, funny. Last night's dream of a vernal green penis might be taken as a prediction of rain and the end of winter. <laughs> we don't know. Our vagina is now approaching, but it is still far away. There's so much to do. <laughs> we cannot find ourselves asleep on our side, only awake there taken from the receptive continuity of a dream. Sex with someone and solicited for a younger man. This is a dream about bird watching. <laughs> and we get out of bed, pushing up from the pillow with the right arm, the skin of our arm still impressed with the weight of our having slept, both feet on the floor, no rug, just there, only wooden slats about two inches wide and decoratively mismatched. We are round. The room is still blind. We brush our teeth. Selecting our toothbrush is automatic. It isn't property, but person. The mouth held open, the green toothbrush reading the teeth from left to right. The activities of the Marquis de Sade either exceed or close over the boundaries of our person. We appeal to our daily life, which is persistently abnormal but adorable. We are slaves to it to provide us with the authority of our anti-authority. A mule is to a carpenter, but a pine nut is to breakfast. It is still morning. From another room, we hear a man sipping his pants. We see a big dog setting the pace for a woman out walking it, while the sound of a police helicopter hangs overhead, supposing that some crime can be concluded. If subliminal means meaning that's hidden, can we say surliminal to speak of meaning exposed? In the kitchen, where the floor meets the wall, crumbs accumulate. They get greasy. We are irritated, overwrought. We can't throw anything away. Paradise is a damaged situation. We think. We write. We eroticize our earthly situations and conditions, and likewise they eroticize us. So we've been both the subject and the object of desire, and the origin and recipient of pleasure on many occasions. But daily life is a very ambivalent agent of desire. Perhaps that's what makes it so compelling as an agent of writing. The oscillation between interior and exterior of what seem to be the contents of our experience makes our daily life simultaneously expressive of us and of not us. We are thinking about both mitigated and unmitigated sex. 
without hiding. We are hidden, though monuments explode and interior. A word is the purest and most sensitive medium of social intercourse. We bark. Like selves equated to distant beings, our shadows exchange fists in the parking lot. A poised fist is not sexual in its potential to select a surface, but I, a word our shadows have wandered away from, unnerves a passerby. In its own uplifting splash, the eye continues its rap, intervenes with the fist counts out while we diffuse and borrowed walk into the bank building and address a pot that houses a more permanent resident, a nicely dwarfed palm, one of many nicely dwarfed palms manicured in rows next to the rows of elevators. The elevators slide through the interior of the building while we write a letter to Mono. Dear Mono, command, command. Mm. If there is no obedience, there is no privacy. After signing the letter, we are caught making love. In the pot. <laughs> are you talking to yourself as you do that? Asked the woman. She's come into the corridor near the elevator shafts with a companion, a man. We drop the soft palm frond with which we had engaged in almost unbearable tickling. We are still muzzy with desire. Though, on the one hand, the arrival of this couple in the quarter might offer us a new heaven. That of being seen, they have in fact interrupted our lovemaking. It is difficult, in any case, to turn our attention to her question enough to understand it. What is she really asking us? Do you engage in what the poet from the woods calls sub-vocalization, asked the man. Like, when you, you read a book of poetry and sort of hear the words in your head, even though you aren't intentionally sounding them out? Yes, do you? Asked the woman. With something that has a story in it, too, or contains a fragment of a narrative, like when I'm having sex, it's like I'm having a story. I hear things like, she spread her legs as he softly ran his tongue across her vagina. The, the third, third person, person, we exclaimed. We exclaimed. <laughs> the voice is blue. Her kiss shines. This is wonderful and window. The difference between sound and sight are semantically inessential. At least, this seems to be true of literary experience. But the third person was asking about sound and the senses in an extra literary experience involving the tender but erect tip of a palm frond, the tongue, the genitals, ourself, and the third person in a corridor. All of which we took to a room where the curtains were still drawn across the windows. Sometimes we accept the enormous situation of the subject-object, wherein we exhibit, but we could say embrace, some of our capacities, praises, praises, ferocity. Loneliness Let's remember is the place in the woods where we stop to compare a shrubby ravine extending uphill under leaning tree trunks in loneliness, the with certain landscape vast. paintings by Cezanne in which the background steps out from behind the trees. It often seems in the that ravine, the there were gaudy berries. It's lost in the grass. We parted the brambles to pick them. Something, meanwhile, is keeping us from speaking to a phantom. Did we think that things stand Desirous still? observation flows through our memory with irrational devotion. Desirous observation if we flows don't by us as we move. remember the prick of the Nothing brambles happens. growing in the gently eroding Nothing ravine, means. framed by the diagonal Nothing trunks persists. of tall, dry pines. The silence of the lonely woman of our profession has written her way into a romance and she floats away buzzing in a wisp of thought, leaving us holding our somewhere hands among the berries on the wide road. A Let's replace the berries with dimpled out of rubber neck, objects. Reminding us that we've not yet it read feels like memory, the book, a language of you, me, girls holding hands, quiet as fish in the 
noisy brook. We were the romantics. We liked the romantics. It appears to be a diary. Courage was a monster. The air the is still of his hand and the other of his human writing. Our visible fissures in a dramatic landscape. Ten six tolerable heat. But he, nonetheless, and now the camera moves rejected water, Tim in an irrigation down room. and fuses the Now I am climbing the barrels of my inner stream. Monstrous, buried between monsters. Tim, rocks, eight, saw Philip from a distance. Sticks pressing over the wall, of outfits waiting for the bob. Up. Ten, nine, Their bodies fell. waving hands, all waving. Ten, eleven, dummies. The sun is added to by the heat spurs his two flirting bones. Diving at bugs, flying upstream. The eleven, just six, the surface Philip is gone. Sick of competing with the universe for my affections. How did the protagonist get there? There's no time. Eleven seven. The film screen. The universe is black. intolerant. Are my knees looking or shooting? Minstrel bleeding. It reminds me that I am truck noise. But that I may not care about a story of any of this tomorrow. With tears but I never can talk, believe it. Barking chatter. Eleven eight. The lens opens on More symptomatic. It appears to burn its way and through I will the surface everything. of the screen of the I eye. still prefer it's a the universe. A military Philip. genius, Even though on a desert my sand. cavities are filled a with extra holes. crumbles, smoking as a demonstration of what has always happened. Philip says he is willing everywhere to play the sound second fiddle. has been left out. Each soldier wants to respect and to be left to do I the I tell job him he has to play third. To the universe and this into my theoretical writings. And we don't figure in. He says, I am only saying this to Wimble him. Well, it's like a little sentence in human history. These found entries cool ridges and closer together. That's the reflection in when the I wrote the last text. I must have been opening their mouths, arguing with them. Sharing makeup? Now I ask myself this question. Coming up on them. Do I want to humiliate him? You can see the shadow in the mirror. Twelve by I want to Clothes, the social fabric and open the eyes. to recognize my priorities. I want to know what it feels like to succeed symbolically. Although I fear... Cut into an empty room emptiness. and sound on. Uninterpretable. Diffuse shuffling. An exit and a band. It's in the very nature of the room is a mock up on a little table. And abandoned in what appears to let us forget or ordinary backyard. And then to Two girls enter from no more, talking to a storm. When they arrive at the table, one of we them picks up the little mop and places course, it in the hand of the other because child. Because desiring the other child flows on it. It serves as a to desiring the critical reunion of detail. Fly open. On the hand we of the one child rests a little piece of cardboard. Because we wish to suspend the universal. Sprinkle that. With under a few flecks of spring rain, rain, the hillside and the share the grain deep in grass. Two women enter again from somewhere unstated, as if they have no Logic. sense of origin. The more the grass grows, they the more the, table. the rain falls. Something is missing. Fact. It doesn't seem to be the girls. Tim is a cardiologist. It's possibly the little mock-up of the room. They look under the table and on the ground, finally becoming self-conscious. It is because they are Since every heart is watched, surrounded by something does animal, the activity somehow seem unfamiliar a loose. They are each now standing at either end of the table, looking at what they are laughing. We're always doing the same thing. The man and the other says, that's what you think. Is and they burst out in laughter again. His eyes Double are low. dark. He is reading a dark book. It is Philip. <laughs> Logic. I can hardly Men remember why we were seem looking. to stare at women, but they don't learn much. <laughs> Back. Were we looking? For something? In response to Philip's disgruntled They laugh more and more. We will One of them on the ground holding her stomach. Formidable the other task. takes off her sandal, gesturing as if she's about to throw it. Logic. A piece of cardboard slips off the sandal onto the Full table. Of the as she lets go of the sandal of liberation. Traveling from its laughing seated haste with one. They both dive in the sandal beam. like little children at play, struggling over a toy gun. Subsidiary logic. Nighttime, though it is the performer's scopic. When sensation is, is around, the river creatures visible today forage. Thank you. Thanks.